Good morning, afternoon, morning. wherever you live. Hi, Dave. How are you today? Good, Eric. Good. How are you doing? You look well. I, I, well, I'm, I'm above ground. Yeah, that's, that's always a good so thing. Thanks for a good day. Uh, <laughs> first off, my age. <laughs> yeah, exactly. First off, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. I hope yeah. everybody is having a great time. Those of you in Chicago, I hope you're not green. Uh, <laughs> Don't drink the water. <laughs> we'd like to thank everybody that provided uh, photos of uh, the niches that have been playing. Hopefully you saw some of those. Maybe you recognize some of your own work. Uh, but we do thank you for uh, providing those to us. Um, as always, we're going to kind of give you a brief overview here of installing some niches. Um, you know, one thing we always stress with these videos is that this is not the written directions. Always follow the written directions. This is really more of just of a guideline or kind of an overview of how this is done. Uh, you know, it's all pretty close, but again, you have to follow the actual written directions. Follow your local building codes, your plumbing codes. Uh, of course, you want to watch for sockets or whatever in the wall, for water lines, all the normal stuff you would do, which we're really not going to address. But pay attention to what we're doing here. I think it'll work for you. Um, we're going to start out. we got a couple of spots here where we're going to do some different niches. Uh, Dave's going to start us out down here. Dave, why don't you kind of start us out where... To a degree where niches kind of came well, from. We're skipping know, mud walls, but. Yeah, mud walls. So, you know, originally you, the way you would build a niche back in the day, uh, you would do some framing, two by fours in yep. the wall, right? Uh, to create that space. Uh, then you would take your, you know, cement backer board that you, oop, don't trip over my niche here. Yep. <laughs> cement backer board here. Uh, and just basically glue it in or screw it in. You, yep. You'd cut the pieces and that. So I'm actually going to install one here. So you just so, back in, you've got this framed in for the size of the niche you want, standard two by four wall correct, cavities. Correct, yep. So I'm just going to use some glue or sealant, however you want to. or whatever. Yeah, because you've got, you know, drywall on the adjacent wall back there. Uh, you, you don't want to be putting screws through it because you might be in the living room with this right. <laughs> screw head. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, one advantage with this is obviously yeah. you can make it any size you want yep. to. Um, just, you know, cut the board to size. Cut the board to size. Like I said, it's Back in the day when it was cement board, so that's what you had to use. Okay, I glue that in, and then now I have some pieces that are cut to go around the perimeter. That, and you could you could use screws here if you wanted to, or or like glue it in. Yeah. Here. Okay. Then glue one up to the top. And then a couple side pieces in, and the side pieces will hold up the top. No it cures. Yeah. Locks that in. You have to put, in. A, you put a hand on there for you. Yeah, you put get a hand on board there. there. Yep. Yeah. Two man job here. <laughs> okay. They're perfect. Yeah. So now you're yeah. you're good. You just tile that up and you're ready to go. Yeah, just tile. Yeah, tile that up. You're ready to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just see if you're painting. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, then your backer board will go on the wall. Well, now, yeah, I have a niche created, but the uh, the challenge is going to be how am I going to waterproof this niche? Oh, with cement board, you got to waterproof it. Yes, you do. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you do. So I would either, if I'm using a uh, topical applied membrane, such as a fabric membrane. Okay. I would have to cut all the pieces to put them into that. Right. I would use inside, outside corners. You know, it's very cumbersome to do that. Right. Make sure that it's a 100% waterproof. Because you really want it to be watertight, even yeah. though it's on a wall. Right. Or if I'm using a liquid membrane, then I got to have all my mesh. I'm gonna change the planes. You know, two, three coats of liquid on that. You know, and, and it's a time, you know, it's a time factor there because now we got a lot of drying times. Right. To do that. Right. Okay. So I mean, the, the 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 cutting the board itself isn't that time consuming it's, it's all it, the it, other stuff it's the, all the other stuff that's right right and, and yeah. obviously you could really only do that if the board was not already installed that's correct now if you were in a situation where the board was already installed well then i've got cut that uh cut that out and then i'd have to sneak in my my backing right and do the same thing i would then uh, put my pieces in yeah to do with, that or yep. with metal studs uh, yep. metal studs yep okay yep. yeah very good so yep. that would that would really take you a while it, realistically it would take do. take me a while and then again i'm it's a little dicey on, on the waterproofing part right right so, yeah okay yeah. well let's just continue on down the line here a little bit and you know i mean this is kind of where niches came out i mean the noble company has you know they've had niches for almost 20 years now we have. Mm -hmm. um i mean yeah. at one time we had a niche very similar to this with a flange around it but let's let's talk about yeah. that a little bit so you, we've seen the foam niches out there that has the flange right yep. okay uh 
to install those, I mean, they're, they're, they're fine, but to install them, it's a little bit more cumbersome too than and, and without the flange. I'm just gonna briefly you know, install this niche yeah. in this, okay? I'm going to uh, take my level here and my pencil. And I'm gonna put the niche in its desired location, okay? In between the studs that are 16 inch on center, which is typically 14 and yep. a half inch. So obviously you would lay this out to the tile I pattern. would lay that out to the tile pattern, right. Yep. Yep. So Hold level that up. Yeah, and take that I'll off. just draw that. Okay. So, so you, you flipped it over because you got to basically allow for the, yeah, the, the yep. flange on this. Because I have the flange because the flange has got to be, you know, flush with the backer board. Right. So it's not and going then, in between the studs. It's actually going on top of the studs. It's going to be going case. on top of the studs. Right. And that's where the challenge will be. So okay. First of all, I'll go ahead and I'll just take, in this case, I'm using a foam board and I'm just using a keyhole saw. It's easy to cut. Yep. Just gonna. Oh, hey, did you check for power lines? They didn't snap off. Oh, maybe I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's all we need, right? That's all we need, yeah. <laughs> Not that I haven't done that before <laughs> and lived to tell it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that hit the stud, right? Hit the stud. So that, okay. you, at least you know where to stop. So yeah. So again, I'll have to come over here. And hit the stud. Hit the stud. Okay. You could you could obviously do this with a, a, a roto yeah. zip up skill. Sure. Any, any, any you anything you want to do that. So yeah. but you can see here that it's going to this particular niche with the flange yeah. is going to overlap onto my stud. Right. Well, if I pre-applied my backer board and I said, oh shoot, now I, I got screws that may be in the way. Yeah. So I'll have to move the screws. If I if I decide I'm gonna add a niche later on, right? I wasn't thinking about the screws. Well, gotta move it all over to make room for the cuts. Uh, well, make room. These over here, they, they look good, they'll clear. Okay. Then I'll take my I'll take my knife. And again, roto zip or whatever. In yeah. this case, I've got. We're using a board here that cuts relatively easy. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, if you're doing this with a cement board, you'd probably go to a grinder. A or grinder. A yeah. You know. So you're kind of cutting right down, ideally, the center of that stud. Ideally, the center of that stud. That's correct. Right now, I can see where this sometimes could get a little dicey when you are cutting like you are right now, where you only have roughly a half inch of board there to. Ideally, not break off. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just where you hit it with a hammer. That's where I hit it with a hammer. <laughs> you know, okay. and maybe get something out here to so yeah, I mean, try that piece out and trying to get it on that stud is is a little bit trickier yeah. than than yeah, that still didn't get all the way through here so. There you go. Okay. Ah. <laughs> oh, <look at. laughs> oh, happy St. Patty's Day. <laughs> happy St. Patty's Day, Dave. I mean... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that, that almost looks like you. you yeah, it, that, that almost looks like you. <laughs> you guys have been drinking today, haven't you? <laughs> All right, keep going. Don't, don't, don't okay, you, where were we? That's a pot, like a pot of gold. Like a pot of gold, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's dry fit that in place. Okay, looking good, right? But, but, according, but. according to the instructions on this particular brand, I need to put blocking in. Oh, that makes it a little tricky. That makes it a little bit more tricky. Yep. So I have some blocking cut. This. And I have to get that blocking now down about halfway. Probably almost flush with that board. Just about flush with that board here. And I see doing this, you know, real realistic, I, I could shove my hand up underneath the wall to hold it for you. Yeah, you could. It's going to be one uh, day for you, huh? <laughs> yeah. You remember, you signed a contract. I signed a contract. <laughs> 
Okay. Or I could just put this in here and put a screw in it to hold it temporarily. That in. So even though this niche is pre, I mean, even though this niche is pre-built, there's a little bit of work to trying to get oh, this a, done. A little bit, yes. Okay. And have another screw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have another screw. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not that I don't trust you, but I'm not holding it. <laughs> why would you why would you trust me after all that? <laughs> there. Okay. So again, if this if this was a board that was already in place and you want to throw a niche in there, granted the niche is pre-made, but yes. we need we need the cross bracing in there according to their directions. Yep. Okay. Now I'd put one on the top, but for yeah, okay. time purposes here, I yeah, the to top probably doesn't matter yeah, a whole yeah, lot, yeah. other than you gotta have something so to screw it to. Right. Okay. Right, right there. So according to their instructions, I would take a sealant or a glue, whatever foam friendly, I would put beads so you're gluing them along the uh, along the flange there along the flange no I, I mean I can speak from past experience that that quite often these flanges here in the corner get broken off they do you just have to fill it with mud and well you wait repair for it yeah you'd have to repair it you have to put mud glue it back on yep whatever. and then glue it in that's good to go. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. Not, I mean, it's not terrible. It's, 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 but... not, yeah, it's not bad. No, no, no. So, okay. So, I mean, just continue on down the line. I mean, we're looking here at a, at a you know, yeah. real big plastic yeah. one. No more surprises. Yeah, no more surprises <laughs> in there. Yeah, see, you never know what's yeah. going to jump out of the wall. <laughs> so, if this was a real job, a bunch of cans would fall out. Yeah, or, or drywall would be stuffed in there. <laughs> yeah, which water line. So, you know, there are some plastic niches out there yep. that we see in the market. Uh, Again, with this plastic, particular plastic niche, they require blocking. Right. That I had to install. Yep. Like, see, I did over here. You can here. kind of tell from the screw placement. Mm -hmm. yep. Screw placement. Now, this time, now this niche basically, you can't glue this, obviously, because pl it's plastic. Right. Okay. You're going to just. So you slip. had that one already pre cut. But, I, you know, I so it was really cut cutting, cutting it exactly yeah. the same yep. right on that and stud. Then, and then I'll take, uh, I'll take my screws once that's in. And I'll just put a couple in here. Just. Hold yeah. it, just demonstrate it. And, yeah. Yeah. And then. You now, I mean, bonding to this plastic with, I mean, I get, again, it's, you know, someone else's niche, but they're doing this with a thin set sticking directly to the plastic and hoping well, for the best. Well, <laughs> hopefully or? for the best. Okay. You know, uh, go, again, go by the manufacturer's instructions right. on how to waterproof to that. Use but some it, of the products that are out yeah, there for like bond the, enhancers, which, yep, uh, and, enhancers, and, yes. I mean, this one. It's got some flex to it. It, it seems it, like that it, could it, be a concern. It, it, it does. So if you put, say, mosaics in there, yeah, and leans against that shower, seems it's like going to crack it. that mosaic. So yeah. you're going to have to get some backing behind there. That's going to so fill that. Yeah, fill just, that in to make sure yeah, that there's there's a there's yeah, a bit there's of flex quite, there. Quite a bit of flex in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But that that one's pretty easy, pretty solid. It's, it's, it's it, pretty easy. Again, now with with this is. I mean, you know, obviously with this, our you know, our board's lining up pretty well, so it does. we're yeah, good. They're, they're designed. Um, I mean, this one here, um, just another niche we're, we're looking at. Yeah, looks, niche It looks very much like, really, like the first one you did out of board, but it's pre-built for you. They did. They took the board and they pre-built that for you, and they pre-waterproofed it for you. Yep. Basically, they they took their uh, foam product, they cut it pieces, yep. mitered it, and then epoxied it or however they glued it. In. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. With this particular one, there's no flanges. Right. Okay? I don't really need any blocking with it. So it cuts straight so out. You, yep. you cut straight out. Yep. And then all you're going to do then for this one is, you know, put some sealant or glue on the back of it again. Whatever they recommend. Push it in. Oh, it's easy. It's, there. It, it's easy. Yep. yep. So the thing with this is, though, you see there's not much of a flange. No. And it's not a waterproof flange either, right? Mm, right. I mean, you got open foam right here. Right. So you're going to have to, if I was to use this, I would put my membrane on. The wall and I would lap it in. Wrap it in, yeah. Into that. So now I gotta I, I gotta wrap that in yeah, there. And make yeah, sure that my my corners and everything have some inside corner or outside corners mm -hmm. on it. Because yeah, I really wouldn't want to just trust just that foam right here. Yeah. I mean, like you can use some sealant. Probably, that's not enough yeah, of an edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. But again, it's 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 simple. Yeah. So I'm a bit like I say they could they could theoretically do almost this with our CBU if they want to. That I mean they, they could, could cut it all up and lay it up somewhere else and glue sure. it all together and Absolutely. bring it in tomorrow. 
and basically mm -hmm. have this made out of cement board as well. Okay. But you still need the waterproofing issue. Still need the waterproofing. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, here's one that's you know been around for a while. Um, yeah, it has been around for a while. In fact, I've, I've actually used these years ago. Yep. They were kind of one of the only pre-made ones that were out there. And uh, you know, they're stainless steel. It's spot welded together. Uh, it's got a stone coating on it for like it's for, gravel, for adhesion. Yeah, and it, uh, you can see it. It's got just sealant that they use to to waterproof the seams. Yeah, there. Um, I mean, there's a flex there. A little bit of flex there. See, I've I've had these in a box and they've been bent. So you yeah. got to get them all back to you know, bend them all straight again. Make sure that they're they're the least amount of buildup as possible. Right. Right. Yeah. So now, I'm also looking at this. I can really see it from this back side that it, it it's kind of mitered in that the the, the front opening is. It, it is. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of like a pie shape. Yeah. Cut. You know. Uh, so when you go to put your tile in, you're going to have to float it out along that side right. if you want nice straight. Yeah, or, or even, be sure you cut all you your square, tile. Everything is square that way. Yeah. Uh, with this again, this type with the flange, and you can't hardly probably see it, but I have blocking already pre-installed in there, yep. like I could uh, do over here. Again, it's just very. You're just going to set it in, okay? And I grab a couple screws, the gun. You know, this one, this is kind of a little bit different from all of them. It's got a flange, but it's going on top of the board. So you didn't cut it out. It's going on top of the board. Okay, now I imagine if you wanted to, you could probably put this behind the board, but. Well, if you wanted to take blocking, put it, if you wanted to take some blocking and, and space it out and make, make sure it's flush, you could do that. But I guess a that, lot of, that, kind would of kick, a lot of that would kick your board out, I guess, though. Kind of a lot of dinking around there, too, yeah. to do that. So you, you notice, so. Yeah, well, there, I was looking there at is this, quite, a, quite a, a lip there. Quite a lip there yeah. that you gotta uh, if, build out over. You know, if you're using a large format tile, maybe not as big a deal, but if you're wrapping your walls with mosaics and that, you're gonna have to you, feather you, edge you, that out. Feather edge that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, it's got a little flex to a it. Little, a little bit of flex edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, these some of these welds are a little concerning, but but no, it's been around for a yeah, long time. Been around it's, for it's a long performed. time. Yep, it's performed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um yep. I mean, we're we're now getting down to what you know, I would say is a familiar-looking niche, um, meaning that it's noble companies. It's noble companies, yep. Here, I'll switch sides with you, okay, Dave. Okay, switch sides. So, anybody's familiar with their noble company niches, they they knew that they were brown in color. Well, we've uh, gone and it's a running change now. It's blue in color, noble color. Yep. It is a yeah. very pleasing color very, to the eye. Very eyes. pleasing color, even, goes, though you, yeah. even though you don't see it when it's all said yeah, and done. Yeah, it goes, goes, goes very well <laughs> with your eyes, Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, I, I guess, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. Okay. Very easy to install. Uh, you're going to cut out the backer board to the size of the niche. You can you know, get it, uh, place it in between the studs, find where your studs are, and then cut down the studs and we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll demo it. Yeah. yeah, no yeah. cross bracing in this at no all. No cross bracing in, in, uh, at all in this. Right, you know, so, I, and I think you've said in the past that you quite often will actually start the tile process and then more or less cut the niche in yeah, as lot, you're going on. A lot of times, because you know when I when I do my showers, I want to make sure that I've got that either that uh, grout line or the tile uh, right there at the bottom of the niche. Right. You know, uh, so I don't have the least amount of cutting at all. All depends on the tile layout right. and how that works. But, but with, without having cross bracing or the flanges, you can really just cut I, that I, in I, I, I can almost do it. I any can, time. I can do it. Uh, you know, I run up my tile from the floor, and then when I get close, maybe the one before that, I'll lay that out. Boom! I'll cut my niche in. I'll waterproof under that, right. and away I go. Right. Okay. okay. So again, just sealant on the back of that 250 sealant. Well, you'll, I'll demonstrate one in the a minute. Next. Yeah. But again, it just. So that's rest in there. Square yeah, peg in a square yeah, hole. It's up against the drywall back a, here. Yeah, although it's not a square, right? Yes, that's square. Yeah. <laughs> but if it was, it would be. It would be. That's right. So you know, it it, it it's uh, tight against the drywall in the back. Right. Too. So there's no flex to it. Right. And again, we have this large uh, edge around right. that, yep. inch and a quarter wide, where you can run your membrane, whether it's liquid or a, a sheet membrane, mm -hmm. and Either thin, uh, modify thin set right to it, or use our 250 sealant to uh, tie that waterproofing in. I mean, without the cross bracing and really relying on the Noble Sealant 250 to glue that or bond and, that to the back wall, yep, is it yep, strong? And, and hold it up, and it's and not going to fall out and of there. the back in the backer board. No, it's not going to fall out of there at all. So I took a niche yesterday okay. and put the 250 sealant on it to the back side of a piece of drywall, and 
you're not going to get it off there unless you break it up in little pieces. Get it off of there. I mean, try it. Try it. Really? Yeah, really. Okay. <laughs> now we're wrestling. Boy, boy. <laughs> I don't know if I trust your wall. <laughs> I'll catch you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I trust you. I don't know if it'll hold me or not. It'll hold you. Oh, well, it's on, it, it ain't coming loose. It's not coming loose. So it's, it ain't coming out of that it's wall with a bottle of shampoo, that's for sure. No, it's not so coming you'd, out. You'd have to literally break it you'd have to, to get it off that wall. You'd have to break that off, off that wall, yep. Let's get that out but of the you way. Know, the, but the, you see the flange you broke off. Oh, yeah. That won't break off because that's resting on the backer board. Yeah, so and that's going to be bonded in with, with either a sealant or, or membrane. Yeah, so the, the board's really supporting it all. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even your industrial size shampoo bottles are not going to break that out nope, of there. it's not. Okay. Yeah. You know, this this particular one is our, our 314 niche. It comes with a removable shelf. You can either then set it in the desired location. Yep. That one has a removable shelf now too. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Just, just saying. Yeah. So with this, you put the shelf wherever you Shelf's want. Shelf, or you want to put a glass yeah. shelf in there, a stone shelf, doesn't matter. But you have a wide. You can now, if you wanted to turn this niche, you could turn it. Sideways, obviously, there's a little framing to do, yep. and if it's a load supporting wall, then you're going to have to do a header. But it's, uh, it's really a nice look too. And we right. have, you know, 30 inch ones and 48 inch right. ones too. And I actually did 48 eight inch one in my own shower and turned it on sideways and put a header above it. Right. Really, is a, a great. Look. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. again, it was totally waterproof. An another thing I'm noticing here, and I see you have a piece here, so I'm going to reach over and grab this for you. Is a piece of tile. I mean, I'm looking at a couple of these, and I'm questioning the size of the, the size of these i mean with this one for an example it looks like it fits in there perfect pretty 12, close to perfect 12, with a 12, 12 by 12 here 12 and, 12. The shelf and, the, and it's designed and, for and that sacks. yeah because most of your typically most of your mosaic sheets are 12 by 12 right yeah. right so so, I mean, I, I, so you, you'll fit a nice 12 by 12 mosaic sheet in there it's it's done but, yeah. and i know you, your corners are all rabbited out corners are all rabbited out so we overcut the corners on these so when you do your perimeter tile you don't have to grind the corners to miter them it there's actually plenty of room to fits right to in there sneak right in there with it oh yeah 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 plenty of so, room there as, as you'll notice in some of the other niches with that 12 by 12 tile there's a lot of room there so you got to either float your sides out or you're going to have to cut you'll have some cuts in there or a lot some waste with your mosaics right get on there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Was... same same with this one here yeah it's just mm -hmm. yep. they're not really sized for a they're not really 12 sized by 12, 12 tile you need to jump tile. you have to jump a right. tile right. and cut it way down or you're going to end up probably with three pieces mm -hmm. again a lot of those mosaics out there are 12 by 12. yeah yep. huh. this one that, almost, was, that was close it's close it's close yeah but it's but it's a it's, it's a little big but it's close yeah Huh. That's why we specifically designed this for that 12 by 12. Right. Tile. And I mean, I see, I see you got the other one down here. It looks like the 12 mm -hmm. by 12 on the top and a 12 by 6 on the bottom. Yeah, that's our 304 okay. niche. Yep. One of our most popular, 304 and 314 is our most popular niches. So I'm just going to demonstrate how to install this niche. So again, very simple. Uh, I'm going to hand me that level mm -hmm. over there and that pencil. And we'll lay level. this out. Pencil. Pencil. Okay. So I'm gonna. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find my desired height in this. Okay. And so I'll just kind of set it right here. Before you do that, should we show a corner niche? We can show a corner niche. Yeah. Before, before, you, before, before you cut, cut all in. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So. So we have a line of corner niches too. Yeah. Okay, hold it. Let me take okay. one of those. Yeah. And what's nice about these corner niches. Is there what we call a tower niche? Mm -hmm. You can get a tower niche that has uh, two in the top, two in the bottom. Like, like what we have here. here. Yep, stack. Yep, they stack on top. Yep. Or you can get solid on the bottom and just have the two in the top. Okay. They're very easy to install once the backer board's already up. Once your waterproofing is completely done, now I can go ahead and, and uh, install my niche. I don't have to worry about waterproofing around. So do all the waterproofing first, sure. and then yeah. add this right on top. Add this of it. right in, yeah. Because you're yeah. not cutting it into the wall. No, it's just going to be. It's just going to fit. Let me slide right. this one. Let me slide yeah. this one underneath you once. Right into the corner there. Right. Yep. So you can go that way. You could flip yeah. it upside down. You could put it. You could space them however you wanted to. Exactly. Yep. Okay. And, uh, and another nice thing about these corner niches are, it they can retrofit. 
Now, right. If I have an existing shower, you know, this nice looking shower. You I mean already tiled? Over the tile, yes. So I can sterify my, my tile uh, or there's primers out there, several companies now yep. make a primer to prime onto the tile and simply thin set that right to the tile. And then I can put a nice mosaic or complimentary right. tile right, on right. that. Uh, Jake will bring a picture up of, of, uh, of that. Uh, If you're real, if you're shorter, then you're going to want it like this. <laughs> there you go. So, as you can see in uh, the pictures that we have here, we we installed a uh, niche in an existing shower, and then uh, I tiled yeah. up. Yeah. So you just tiled yeah, up. So, so I can I can kind of revitalize it. So or an afterthought. Or afterthought. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't I don't want to derail again. Maybe we're going to come back around to it. But like we have, I mean, the, a bench very much the same way is that you can we, add it after the fact. We have. Yep. We have. Uh, Benches that we can add after the fact. We have corner okay. benches. We have linear benches. Here I have a a rounded a quarter round bench that can be added to a shower after the Again, fact too. Again, it to the existing yep. tile, then tile and, it. And even if you're using this bench uh, in a new shower that you're you're uh, about ready to tile up, again, you're going to want to get the waterproofing in what I call the envelope completely done, water tested, and then you just thin set the bench in, and then go ahead and tile. Right. That makes okay. sense. That right. makes sense. All right. Yeah, didn't mean to derail you, but let's let's cut this 304 niche in here. Okay. So the 304 niche, it's designed to go in between 16 inch on center studs, okay, which is 14 and a half inches wide typically. Yep. Uh, counting on the framer. Counting the framer. Yep. So I'm just going to find my desired location on this. I just want to make sure that it's level, and I I know my hope because my tile layout should be right. So I find level on that. And I'll just trace out, trace out the bottom. I only need to trace out the top and the bottom. Okay. Well, the studs are because your the really stud straight is, edge. The yeah. stud is going to be my guide. When right. Hand me the saw over here. So I'll take my keyhole saw or, or whatever I want to use to uh, to cut that. <laughs> Hope there's no yeah. water lines. Water lines this time. If I get wet. <laughs> <laughs> You are all in trouble. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> Our HR director is here today. Yeah. You know, you just, uh, I could. Yeah. <laughs> Try to deaden the sound a little bit. Yeah. Then do the same thing up here. Find my find my stud. Cut all the way across. Okay, now I found the stud here. Now you just use the stud behind it as a straight edge. Yep, I just follow right down the stud. Now, one thing about that, though, obviously, is that when you don't have to cut down the middle of the stud, it leaves you a little bit more meat in the board. That you don't have to worry about it breaking off. Well, it does, especially if I have a seam right there. Yeah, like right. See over here. And again, you do this with an angle grinder or a roto zip or whatever you want, depending on the board. Looks like a good one. It might be for a little yeah, two inch just blade. Make sure that everything is clean down the stud. Make sure it's fit. So, once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and dry fit this. Okay. okay? You, you cut uh -oh. it wrong, Dave. Uh-oh. 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 Fire the framer. It's a little bit too small, the hole. <laughs> somebody somebody missed fire up the, a fire little the bit with a framer. Well, not all is lost. We'll take, what, we take the niche back? So what's nice about this, being that it has that wide edge on it, yep. we can cut that down slightly. Oh, just shave the sides. Yeah, just shave it down. So uh, I'll have Jake, our... Assistant over here, uh, cut that down for me. So, uh, Jake, would you like to uh, cut this down? Here Jake's, you go. Not, Jake's not the one that did the framing, too, is okay. that? Well, now we'll wait and wait get now, that wait. back. And that, that's like, good cow. job, Jake. Man, this guy's fast. <laughs> he's, he's good. Really good. <laughs> he really did cut it down. <laughs> so, so, so you just so, you just shaved off yeah. the side. So you can see that uh, shaved off the sides a little bit. Yep. There's still enough meat there to. Yeah, because you start. I mean, you start off with roughly an eighth or an inch and an eighth on inch, the side. Inch and eighth, inch quarter. So yep. Taken off a little bit, it's not yep. gonna hurt anything. Yep. It's still stronger, so still thicker than a half inch. And then 
fit right in. Fits right in. I mean, that'd be, you know, when your when your stud's not plumb or mm -hmm. kicked out a little bit instead of getting out the big hammer and trying yeah, to. Yeah, so if your studs aren't plumb, you could shave off a little bit of one one side of it on an angle yep. to make sure that, because you really want to make sure that this niche is level. I mean, it's belt, going, belt sander could probably do it. Belt depending sander, what you got whatever, to whatever it takes what if to it's do that. just sticking out a little bit proud? I mean, there's you know, a couple boards out there that are a little bit a little skinny. Bit. So, so there's some meat on the back of this that you could sand down yep. if you need to, or you, you really you try not to take do it, it to the back the side because you've got the ethos coating yep. on there. It just sticks a little bit better. Right. Yeah. Uh, tile and thin so you can shave it slightly on the back you side. You can shave it slightly on the back side. Yep. Just yeah. to get it to set yeah. in there. Right. But we we do make these, you know, uh, about uh, three and seven eighths yep. thick. So it does. It is behind the backboard slightly. Right. But by the time you put your sealant on the back and everything, you're pretty much flush. Yep. And again, uh, when you hand me the sealant. I'll, I'll install this. So. Yeah. This is our 250 uh, sealant. This is a foam friendly sealant. It's a it's basically a glue and a uh, seam sealer. Yep. And very strong. Very strong. As we demonstrated. Yeah, we demonstrated. Yes. So I'll just put a few beads on the back of this. Don't need don't need a lot. Yeah. I mean it's really just holding it in place because it's again it's like a square peg in a square hole. It can't yep. go anywhere. Yep. That's all you need on that. Okay, yeah. there you go. And just push it in. Make sure now it's nice and flush. Nice and flush. And again, the back side of it is sturdy. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's it's to the wall. It's to the wall, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we're not we're not relying on that stud holding it out. I can push it back as far as I want to. Again, tomorrow when that's cured up. You are not going to pull that out. You right. don't have to take this out in little pieces to get, right to get it out. And, I mean, something you're hearing people talk about nowadays is like wet shimming. I imagine if it was a little bit deep, you could probably wet you, shim it out slightly to flush it out. You throw them yeah, and stuff a little like bit that. Sure. behind it too. Sure. Yeah. yeah, it all depends on maybe some of these old houses that are uh, true two by four studs. Right. You know, you could yep. do a little shimming on that. Yeah. You know, and of course, all of our homes up here in the northern part of the country. Uh, you know, where it's a lot colder than the southern part. Houses that are built probably from, I'm going to guess, 19, maybe uh, 2000 or on up, that are all by code, exterior walls are going to be two by six. Okay. So if yep. you do an exterior wall, then what you would do is just take maybe by one inch foam, take two pieces of that size of the niche, glue that with the same uh, Noble Seal 250. And put that in. Shim it out a little and bit. Shim it out with two-inch foam. And you still got your insulation right. value there. Yep. And it's still it's still sturdy. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, I mean, this is all great that it's you know lining up with the studs perfectly and everything's mm -hmm. in there. What about a what I'm going to call is a skinny niche? I mean, it, I mean the smaller ones. I mean, I only I only got one. I mean, with this hair, I only got one bottle of shampoo. <laughs> I don't need <laughs> that much bar, shampoo. Bar soap. Yeah. I mean, for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't need two bottles of shampoo. That's, that's all right. I'm saying. Right. <laughs> so we, yeah, we have a, a quite a uh, arrangement of uh, line of different niches here, right? This is our uh, right here. This is our 308 niche. Basically, it's a soap dish niche. Yep. Right? They'll use that. A lot, a lot of a lot of the, uh, women they like it. They'll put it down below and use it for a foot rest uh, when they uh, shave their legs. So right. I imagine that's how what you use it for. I, I it's up a little higher. <laughs> okay. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but then I'm in tip-top physical condition, so I <laughs> stretch it up yes, there. I... <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going with. Yes, I do not want to go to the beach with you. <laughs> so again, it's it's this is in, this is actually in between the studs. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> in between the studs. Yep. Yeah. Take that level from you. Yeah. And just mark that off. So. I level it up yeah. for where I, my so, desired yeah, location. I mean, it's 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 not going to touch either stud. It's just going it's in gonna, between there. Not going to touch either stud. Take my keyhole saw.
do like a real guy drop it in the yeah, wall. Yeah, like any wallboard guy yeah, would do. He'd throw, throw it down in the, right in there. Throw it right down in the cavity. Leave it there. So now it really is a square peg in a square now hole. Now it is a square peg in a square hole. Yep. Right there. That. So that easy. Again, I will just take my... No, I twisted it. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, one job, Eric. I know. I... Yeah. Put it in place. Boom. Done. Done. Do your waterproofing around that. Now, if you're going to use a liquid uh, waterproofing, say our uh, aqua blue right. waterproofing uh, liquid membrane, the Noble Seal 250 goes very well with that. I can, I got a gap. I would just fill that in around. So you probably don't even really need to have any tape then as tight as that joint is. Yeah. And then I I would just either when I I take my paintbrush with my liquid membrane and I could paint it in, I could just tool that down. And then filled in the gap so the liquid doesn't fall in right. there. Yeah. And I can immediately put the liquid on there. Does and the liquid a moist, will actually cure that? It's a moisture cure sealant. So I can go ahead and I can put my mesh and my liquid on there. All at one Close, time. Yeah. You got caulk all over your shirt now. That's that's my life here. That's why. That's why. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> True professional. <laughs> <laughs> it's tempting. All right, I it's think tempting. we've got we got pretty much everything covered here. I think. I mean, we've got some other foam products that we've, we've talked about a couple of them already. Um, I mean, I see yeah. another bench so, down here in the ground. Yeah. So we we have a shelf bench, too. Question. We have a question. So the question was using Noble Seal 150 to install. We say no. Uh, it's not a foam friendly sealant. That's why. Uh, that's one reason why we developed the 250 is that it is a foam friendly sealant. Uh, and most, uh, once most contractors have used the 250 versus the 150, they, they, they stay like with that. Gun. Yeah, they like it. It guns a little easier. It's foam friendly, it's low VOC and it's moisture right. cure. If they're using the 250, say in a shower, uh, where all of your seams, all of your corners is going to be a sealant. Right. The 250 sealant, since it's a moisture cure, it can be flood tested immediately. Where the 150 sealant has to, you have to wait overnight to flood test on that. So all, after all that, the answer is no. The answer is no. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Any other any other okay. questions we got there while we're, we're on this right here? Okay, we'll okay. keep going. Okay. So we have shelf benches, okay, foam. Yep. Again, they they put in after the waterproofing right. is, is done. Now that okay. particular bench has a frame that's lagged yep. into the wall. Yeah, we have uh, we have uh, support metal support yep. aluminum that yep. will uh, bolt right into the wall. Okay. For that. Yep. That's, yeah, you can throw that right out of the way. Okay. Eric's leaving his bottle around. So we have foam curbs, solid foam curbs, yep. and curb overlays for the uh, foam mortar bed right. methods too. Right. And all you know, different heights or, or different lengths, and. Uh, Look like we're going to be coming out with some two-inch wide uh, ones too here very soon. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. As well as all the bases and the membranes, all the bases and drains, and, membranes. and everything else we've got. Okay. Also, all of our foam products that you're seeing here today is customizable for large projects. I think about 50 or more will make the niches, the sizes that you want, with the depth, pretty much anything you want. Same with curbs and benches. Too. So if somebody has a special size, mm -hmm. we can make it for them. We can make form. Okay, yep. fantastic. Um, I think we've pretty much got everything covered here that we wanted to cover yeah, as far as pretty, niches yep. go. Yep, pretty much um, got I mean, everything I'm sure there's some here. other niches yep. on the market yep. that we didn't really address, but for the most part, they're all working very much like this. Yeah, um, yep. Like that. We've got pretty much covered, you know. You know, you embarrassed me and you scared me. All <laughs> oh, oh, days work. <laughs> I, I do what I can do. <laughs> I embarrass yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait till the next one, Dave. Oh, no, I can't wait. Can't wait. Um, I, th I thank everybody for watching. Again, I want to you know reiterate that you you know do need to follow local building codes. Read the directions of whoever's niche you might be using. Hopefully, it's a noble company niche. Um, and and happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody else. And uh, if 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 George is watching, I'd like to say, go blue. Yeah. 
We're going to be giving away three niches. Uh, we'll have a draw. We don't have the drawing here. It's actually got left in the office. So we'll be drawing those and basically be uh, awarding a niche to three different people. Uh, there's some different sizes online. And as Dave said, we can also make them custom. Um, so with that, I thank you, Dave, as always. It's been enjoyable. Been, been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you all for watching us. Have you seen Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks.